Hello friends. Welcome to Ally Learn. Today in this lecture we will study canonical forms of second order linear PDE. So friends, before proceeding with the canonical forms, the first question that must be coming in your minds is that what is a canonical form and why do we study it? So before I answer that question, I would like to tell you one thing that I have written two terms, canonical and normal. Both the terms are used interchangeably for the same thing, okay? Both terms mean the same thing, canonical and normal forms. And now to the thing that why do we study it? So friends, the second order linear PDE that is an expression of this form is converted into canonical or normal form so that it acquires a simple form and then solving it becomes easier. So that is the aim of converting a second order linear PDE into canonical or normal form so that it acquires a very simple form that can be easily integrated and then its general solution can be easily found. So canonical or normal form is a easy standard form of a second order linear PDE integrating which is easy. That's why we study the canonical or normal forms of a second order linear PDE. Now friends, before we proceed towards converting a second order linear PDE into its canonical form, let's recall that a second order linear PDE is classified into three forms. First is hyperbolic, second is parabolic and third is elliptic. So friends, in today's lecture, we will study how to convert a hyperbolic second order linear PDE into its canonical form. Okay? So now let's proceed with it. Hyperbolic PDE. So first of all friends recall what is a hyperbolic PDE and expression of this form and with an additional condition that b square minus 4ac is positive. Okay? So this expression along with this condition forms our hyperbolic PDE. So friends, now let's we begin our steps of converting this hyperbolic PDE into its canonical form. Step 1 is to form the characteristic equations. So in order to form the characteristic equations, we start with the equation a lambda square b lambda plus c equals 0. So friends don't get confused with this equation as this is not the characteristic equation. We will be using this equation to get our characteristic equations. What we will be doing is that we will be calculating its roots and using the roots of this equation we will be forming our characteristic equations. Ok friends, as I already gave you a hint that we have to use the roots of this equation. So we move towards calculating the roots. In order to find the roots of a quadratic equation, so you can always see that this is a quadratic equation as the degree over here is 2. So towards calculating the roots of a quadratic equation, what is the first thing that we do is to calculate the discriminant. So here also we look at the discriminant. Since the discriminant that is b square minus 4ac. Okay, so this is the discriminant of this equation and we already know that this thing is positive as my PDE is given to be hyperbolic. So we get that this discriminant is positive and we all know that if the discriminant of a quadratic equation is positive 
then this equation will have two real and distinct roots okay so above equation has two real and distinct roots say lambda 1 and lambda 2 now i have got both the roots of this equation now i will form my characteristic equation and this is here the characteristic equations are dy over dx equals lambda 1 and dy over dx equals lambda 2 so these two form the characteristic equations of this hyperbolic pde okay so friends remember the characteristic equations of this hyperbolic pde is given by these two expressions so friends after obtaining the characteristic equations over here we move on to our next step and the next step is a very simple one we just have to integrate the two obtained characteristic equations so here is my step two step two is integrate the characteristic equations so this was my first characteristic equation so what i have to do is integrate and suppose on integrating i get this solution phi of xy equals c1 okay once i integrate i will get a function of x and y which i am naming as phi and a constant of integration which is over here okay so this equation 2 i obtain by integrating my first characteristic equation over here okay now friends i do the same thing with my second characteristic equation this is over here dy over dx equals lambda 2 i do the same thing over here that is i integrate and suppose upon integration i get this as my solution okay again because i have terms of x and y only so i will have a function of x and y and a constant of integration okay friends so this equation 3 i obtain upon integrating my second characteristic equation over here now friends the next thing that we will be doing is that i will name this first solution as xi and the second solution as eta okay so in this equation which i obtained by integrating my first characteristic equation that i get i will be naming this thing as xi over here and the second characteristic equation upon integration gives me psi and i will be naming this psi as eta over here okay friends so this was my step two that i integrate both the characteristic equations and the solutions that i get i name them as xi and eta okay friends so after obtaining my xi and eta my next step will be to change my independent variables from x and y to xi and eta okay that is my next step so let's move on to it step 3 change the independent variables x and y into xi and eta that is earlier my function was u as u of x y now i will be considering it as u as a function of eta and xi okay now u is a function of psi and eta so when i am considering u as a function of xi and eta i have to calculate the partial derivatives with respect to x and y once again okay so now my u is a function of xi and eta so when i calculate the partial derivative of u with respect to x i get as del u by del xi then del psi by del x plus del u by del eta into del eta by del x this thing 
I am getting by applying my chain rule to this expression. Okay. Next, I write it in a simplified manner. This is partial derivative of u with respect to xi. This is partial derivative of xi with respect to x. This is partial derivative of u with respect to eta. And this is partial derivative of eta with respect to x. So, this is my expression of partial derivative of u with respect to x that I obtained by differentiating this expression u of xi and eta. I only applied chain rule over here. That is, first of all, I applied chain rule with respect to xi. That is, I differentiated u with respect to xi and then xi with respect to x. And then I applied the chain rule. I differentiated u with respect to eta and then eta with respect to x. And then I write it in a simplified form in this one. Okay. Now, similarly, I will be calculating the expression of ui. So, my u is a function of xi and eta. I calculate ui by the same manner, applying the chain rule. First of all, I differentiate u with respect to xi, then xi with respect to y, and then do the same thing by eta. That is, I differentiate u with respect to eta, and then eta with respect to y. And afterwards, I write it in the simplified manner of this form. Okay, friends. Now, one thing I want you to remember that try to remember this and this expression. Don't go by deriving it at as deriving this formula has no marks and it will take you maybe one minute extra. So try to avoid wasting one minute and try remembering this expression and this last one and use them directly. Okay friends. So now friends let's move on to calculate the second order partial derivative. Over here we calculated first order partial derivatives. Now we move on to second order partial derivatives. So my ux that I calculated in the uh, just previously I calculated it one. And this is ux as this thing. Now I calculate the second order partial derivative that is uxx. So what I do? I apply a partial derivative on this expression to get my second order partial derivative. Okay, ux was already this one. If I have to get the second order partial derivative, I again partially differentiate this expression with respect to x. Okay, and now I have to differentiate this expression. So what I do? First of all, as we know that derivative, the simple thing that we do is that it's additive. So we split it over addition. Okay, I take del over del x over this plus del over del x of this one. And now I again use the simple thing of product rule of derivatives that is I keep one function as it is, differentiate the second one, then keep the second function as it is and differentiate the other function. Okay, so now let's move on to it and we get this one. First of all, we keep u psi as it is and we differentiate xi x with respect to x. So we get xi xx and then we keep xi x as it is and we differentiate u xi with respect to x and then we do the same thing with this second term we keep u eta over here and differentiate eta x so we get eta x x and then we keep eta x over here as it is and we differentiate u eta with respect to x okay friends and now the next step that we'll do is the same thing that we did in the last derivative when we calculated it that the function u xi is actually a function of both xi and eta. Okay. Earlier, as u was a function of xi and eta, so when we calculated ux, we did certain steps, and now the same steps we have to do when we differentiate this u xi with respect to x, as this is again a function of xi and eta. 
okay friends so now let's proceed here so now this u xi is a function of xi and eta so what we do we differentiate first with respect to xi into xi with respect to x plus u xi with respect to eta into eta with respect to x okay i again i repeat because u xi is a function of xi and eta so we had to differentiate it like this similar to the one when we differentiated u as u was also a function of psi and eta okay friends now the same things we do with this expression also now u eta is again a function of psi and eta so first of all we differentiate with respect to psi into psi with respect to x plus u eta with respect to eta into eta with respect to x okay friends now we write it in a simplified manner as this one okay same thing u psi the derivative of u psi with respect to psi is u psi psi and here the partial derivative of u psi with respect to eta will be u psi eta okay this thing is this one and this thing is this one okay and similarly we get it over here when we partially differentiate u eta with respect to xi we get u eta xi and when we differentiate partially u eta again with respect to eta we get u eta eta okay so this one gives this one this one gives this one the remaining terms are as it is okay and now we write it in a simplified manner what we do we take xi x inside eta x inside do a bit of calculations so that we get a simplified expression of u x x okay but uh, before i move on just like little bit more explanation i'll give you over here so that you all don't get confused that uh, this term is over here unchanged even this term is over here unchanged this term is here unchanged i haven't done touch it these terms they are same as in the previous one this one is over here okay so the only changes i made are these ones and this i told you that this is xi with respect to eta x so it is xi x okay this is eta with respect to x so this is eta x this is eta with respect to x so again i have eta x over here and sorry this is xi xi with respect to x so this is xi x eta with respect to x so this is eta x okay so with all this explanation now we move on to the next thing where we will be writing the expression for u x x in a slightly simplified manner so this expression i just obtained by taking xi x inside the bracket and eta x also inside the bracket and now just rearranging and adding few terms like this and this they are same so we can add it up and we get this as the final expression of u x x okay friends and i think in the previous lectures i have told you that for this course u eta psi and u psi eta they are precisely the same okay for this course the two mixed order partial derivatives will be same so we have got the expression of u x x but in the exam you may not derive it you can directly remember this expression and then use it deriving it will take extra time and you may commit mistakes in between so better to remember this expression and use it directly in the exam okay so like we obtained u x x on similar lines we will obtain u y y equals this expression and u x y equals this expression and again i am repeating just remember these three expressions and use them directly in the exam no need to go for derivations as derivations won't have any marks and will take your unnecessary time okay okay friends so after calculating all these partial derivatives we move on to our next step
So in step 4, what we have to do, we have to put all the partial derivatives that we have calculated in the equation 1. Equation 1 was my given second order linear PDE. Okay. So in that equation, we put all the partial derivatives and after putting the resulting expression that we will be getting is an expression of this form delta u over del psi del eta equals a function of psi eta u u partial derivative psi u partial derivative eta okay friends again i repeat after calculating all the partial derivatives we put the partial derivatives in our initial given second order linear pde and then after introducing all these things and doing a little bit of calculations we get an expression of this type and this expression is the canonical form of my second order linear PDE. Okay, so always remember that canonical forms of hyperbolic second order linear PDE are of this type. So above equation is the canonical form of 1 and if you see this equation 7 properly, this is a partial differential equation with independent variables xi and eta okay friends now again look at this canonical form carefully you will see that this canonical form doesn't contain the partial derivatives u xi xi and u eta eta whereas the second order linear pde we started with also had these two terms so when we converted that second order linear PDE into canonical form, we were able to get rid of these two terms. Now we have only one second order mixed partial derivative. So integrating this expression is easier than the expression that was given to us initially because that contained even these two terms. Okay, so this is a relatively simpler form than the general form of second order linear PDE. So that's why we convert it into the canonical form so that integrating it becomes easier and then we can find the solution easily by just integrating. So friends, this was the utility of canonical form. Okay, so now we proceed towards a question so that we can practice all these steps that we just now did. Okay, the steps you must be remembering. First of all, we form the characteristic equations. Then we integrate them to get two solutions. One solution we name xi, the other eta. And then we change the independent variables from xy into xi eta. And we calculate all the partial derivatives as you can over see over here also ux uy u double x u double y and and uxy and after calculating all these partial derivatives we put it in the initial given second order linear pde and after doing little bit calculations we get our canonical form okay friends so now practice these steps on a question and now we come to our question reduce the following PDE into canonical form. So now this is my PDE. So friends, whenever we have a second order linear PDE, first of all, compare it with the general form of the second order linear PDE. So compare equation 8 with this. This was the general form of second order linear PDE. So we get that over here, my a equals 1, b is 0, c is minus x square, d is 0, and all other remaining are also 0. So we have a is the coefficient of u x x, okay? And c is the coefficient of u y y. So when you get this term u y y on the left hand side, it will be minus x square into u y y. So c becomes minus x square, as here all the terms are on the left hand side. Of the equal sign so first of all bring this term to the left hand side and then calculate 
a b c is so a will be 1 b will be 0 because it doesn't have the term of u x y and c will then become minus x square okay friends so friends after getting my values of a b and c form our characteristic equations okay so step 1 was forming the characteristic equations okay but before that do one thing just see whether it is hyperbolic or parabolic or elliptic and that you see by calculating b square minus 4ac so after having obtained the values of b square i mean the values of a b and c so just calculate this term b square minus 4ac what it will be b0 minus 4 what is your a a is 1 and your c is minus x square okay so what you get you get 4 x square which is positive for all non zero points okay this will be positive whenever my x is non zero so this one is hyperbolic for all x non zero okay so i get this pde to be hyperbolic this hb stands for hyperbolic okay this hb is not a standard notation i'm just using it over here don't consider it to be a standard one okay so after calculating b square minus 4ac i got it to be equal to 4x square which is positive so my this pde is hyperbolic whenever x is non zero okay so now we move on to convert it into the canonical form so after obtaining that this pde is hyperbolic for x non zero we now proceed towards converting it into canonical form and throughout we will be taking x to be non zero as it is hyperbolic only for x non zero okay so now we move towards our first step that was forming the characteristic equations okay as first step for converting a hyperbolic pde into canonical form was forming the characteristic equations so now we move to it step 1 form the characteristic equations and as you must be remembering for that we consider this equation okay now just put the values of a b and c a was 1 b was 0 and c was minus x square okay so we get this expression now so this one and finally this one and now we calculate our lambdas so we get lambda is equal to plus minus x okay so the roots of this equation are lambda equals plus minus x so after this i write my characteristic equations and these are dy by dx equals x and dy by dx equals minus x so these are my characteristic equations i obtained by calculating the roots of this equation okay so after obtaining the characteristic equations i move on towards next step and next step is integrating the characteristic equations so before moving to it i hope that all these steps are clear as um, the characteristic equations are just that dy by dx equals lambda 1 and dy by dx equals lambda 2 and lambda 1 is x lambda 2 is minus x so i get these equations okay So now let's move on to my next step that is integrate the characteristic equations So friends this was my first characteristic equation I can write it in this form dy equals x dx now I integrate both the sides and integrating x gives me x square by 2 here I get only y so I get this step y equals x square by 2 plus c1 and i can write it in a more simplified manner as this one y minus x square by 2 equals c1 where c1 is the constant of integration okay friends so 
This is the first solution that I obtained by integrating my first characteristic equation and I will denote this by xi. So let xi equals y minus x square by 2. Okay. So this was my second step that integrate the characteristic equation and the solution that I get I will name it psi. Okay friends and do one more thing over here that calculate partial derivative of psi with respect to x. The second order partial derivative of psi with respect to x and same thing with respect to y also because we will be needing them in our calculations afterwards okay so after denoting xi this solution just calculate these partial derivatives also okay friends so now we do these things with the second characteristic equation okay second characteristic equation was dy by dx equals minus x so we do the same steps over here and we integrate them and we get y equals minus x square by 2 plus c1 and we write it in a simplified manner as y plus x square by 2 equals c1 and then we denote this second solution obtained by integrating second characteristic equation to be eta. So I have let eta equals y plus x square by 2. Okay. So I have let eta to be the second solution that obtained by integrating second characteristic equation and afterwards just calculate its partial derivatives like in the previous case. Okay. Okay friends. So after this let's move on to our next step that was changing the independent variables x and y into xi and eta and my xi was y minus x square by 2 and eta is over here y plus x square by 2. Okay, so let's move to next step. Step 3. Change the independent variables x and y into xi and eta and in this we calculate all the partial derivatives that are involved in my given equation. So friends, you must be remembering that in the question, the equation that was given to me was uxx equals x square into uyy, okay? uxx equals x square uyy. This was the equation given to me that I am converting into canonical form. So this equation has only two partial derivatives, uxx and uyy. So, I need to calculate only these two, not the others. Okay friends, since the equation has only these two partial derivatives, so we will calculate only uxx and uyy. And uh, you must be remembering that the expression for uxx was, so here it is, we calculate only uxx and uyy and the expression for uxx is this one which I asked you to remember for the main exam. Okay. So in this expression, now we just put our values. So xi x here, here, eta x, xi double x and eta double x. So when we found xi and eta, I calculated xi x, eta x, xi double x and eta double x. Okay. Just like where I denoted xi to be the first solution, Afterwards, I calculated xi x and uh, xi double x as well as xi y and xi double y and when I denoted eta to be the second solution, I also calculated eta x and eta double x. So, I am putting the values from there directly into here. So, I get this. So, xi x was minus x. Here again, xi x is minus x. Eta x is x. Eta x is x xi double x was minus 1 and eta double x was 1. So that's the values I have put over here. Okay. All these values I calculated just a little time ago and then I'm using it over here. That's why I asked you to calculate the values over there. And now only little bit calculations are here. 
So after calculating, we get an expression of the form, this one, okay? These are just calculations, squaring up and multiplying, and then we get an expression of this type, fine? So my final expression of uxx is this one. I'm writing it again, just for your convenience, okay? So this is my final expression of uxx. And similarly, I calculate uyy. Now, my uyy, the expression is this one. And again, you have to remember this expression for the main exam purpose. As deriving it will take lots of time. So better remember and use it directly. And over here, what we are doing, we are putting the values of xi y, again xi y, eta y, eta y, xi y y, and eta y y. All these values I have calculated before and now I am just putting it over here. So my xi y was 1, xi y 1, eta y 1, again eta y 1, xi y y was 0, and eta y y was 0. So these values I have again put over here. It's just that directly I'm putting those values because I, I have calculated it over there. And now we just do a little bit of calculations and we get this expression. Okay, as these two terms vanish, we have only these three terms left. So my final expression of uyy is this one. So I have calculated my expressions of uxx and uyy. Now I will be putting these two expressions in my given second order linear PDE. Okay friends, so now let's move on to our next step. Step 4. Put 12 and 13 in this equation. This was my initial equation which we started with and we are converting this into its canonical form. 12 and 13, they are expressions for uxx and uyy, okay? The expressions we obtained just now. Now we just put expressions uxx over here and uyy over here. So let's start. This is the initial equation. Now this is my uxx that I obtained just now and this is my uyy. Now next I just take x square inside. Just for your convenience I'll write that this is my uxx and this is your uyy. Okay. So now let's proceed and take x square inside. After taking x square inside, we come to this one. And now, just a little bit calculations are there. We can cancel this term with this one, this one, with uh, this one, and the remaining terms will be left. I will combine this and this term. They won't be cancelled because one is a plus sign, other is negative sign. So they will be combined. So, now. I get this one, okay? As these two terms were left, and uh, now these two terms I will add it up. What I got that I cancel this and this, this, and this one, okay? This and this I have over here, and these two terms are right over here. Now I just add up these two terms, I get this one. Now just interchanging LHS and RHS, I get this one. And now over here I have x square. All of the terms have xi and eta, but only over here I have x square. So what I have to do, I have to convert this or replace this x square with xi and eta. Okay. So just try to remember the expressions for xi and eta. If you remember, my xi was y minus x square by two. And my eta was y plus x square by 2. Now, just do one thing subtract these two equations, okay? So, subtracting, we get eta minus xi, the y gets cancelled, and we get it to be x square plus 2 plus x square plus 2 which is x square. Okay, so just come again. My xi was y minus x square by 2. 
and eta was y plus x square by 2. I just apply eta minus y. Okay. If you take eta minus y, what will happen? y minus y, both the y's will get cancelled and we will be left with x square by 2 plus x square by 2 and these two add up to give x square. So, value of x square is eta minus xi. I wanted to write x in terms of eta and xi. So, I used these two relations to get the value of x square. Okay, again, xi was this, eta was this. Just apply eta minus xi. Both the y's will get cancelled and you will have x square by 2 plus x square by 2 which equals x square. Okay, friends, so I got x square equals eta minus xi. Okay, just see these calculations. These are simple, nothing much. So, now my x square is eta minus xi. So, in the next step, I replace x square with eta minus xi. So, afterwards, I get here x square I replaced by eta minus xi. And then finally, I get u xi eta to be this expression. And this expression is my canonical form. Okay. So, you must be remembering the steps what I did. First of all, or we check that whether the equation is hyperbolic, parabolic or elliptic. If it is hyperbolic, then we do the steps that I just now told you. We form the characteristic equations. Then we integrate them. We take the first solution to be xi, second to be eta. Then we change the independent variables from x and in y into xi and eta. Then we calculate all the partial derivatives that are involved in your given equation and then we substitute all those partial derivatives here and then we just do a little bit of calculations and if x or y terms are there we replace x and y by xi and eta by calculating them okay we don't replace x exactly by xi or eta we calculate what it will become okay so after doing that we just rearrange it to get our canonical form. So this is the canonical form of this equation. Okay. So the canonical form of this equation is this one. So friends, these were the steps of converting a hyperbolic second order linear PDE into its canonical form. We will be coming with conversion of elliptic and parabolic second order linear PDE into their canonical forms very shortly. Okay. So with this we come to the end of today's lecture. Thank you for viewing our lecture. Do visit our site alilearn.com and provide us your valuable suggestions and feedbacks to us. Thank you.